Hi guys, it's time for chapter 10. We are down to about 70 pages and six chapters left in this book. And believe it or not, this is one of my favorite chapters. It's called Tangled Up in God's Beard. It's chapter 10 and you will relate to it probably if you've ever been camping or even if you've had to stop maybe at a rest stop on a road trip. Chapter 10. Ohio, about one minute away. This was the first interesting thing that Mama had come up with since we'd been through Detroit. Just outside of Toledo, we pulled over at a rest stop. Mama said, okay, who's got to go to the bathroom? Who's hungry? We got out of the car and started scratching and stretching. The Ohio rest stop was really cool. It was chopped right out of the forest and had picnic tables made out of giant logs. The bathrooms were made out of the same kind of log cabin wood. The only thing about them was they looked kind of small from the outside. Mama looked in her Watson's Go to Birmingham 1963 book and told us, okay, just a sandwich, some fruit, and some Kool-Aid here. Daniel, could you open the trunk so I can get the things out of the cooler? While Mama got the food and Dad looked under the hood of the brown bomber, I went to the door in the little log cabin that had men carved on it. As soon as I opened the door, I gagged. The toilets in Ohio weren't anything like Michigan toilets. Instead of a white stool with a seat, there was just a seat on a piece of wood with a great big open black hole underneath with the sound of flies coming out of it. No flusher, no water, nothing. It looked like if you sat on the seat, you might end up getting sucked down under Ohio somewhere. I breathed through my mouth and spent only enough time in that log cabin bathroom to unroll a bunch of toilet paper. The woods outside looked like a whole lot better bathroom. When I was done in the woods, I passed Byron, who forgot again about his promise not to talk. He told me, man, they must be crazy if they think I'm a set my behind on that hole. Bai's hands were full of toilet paper too. We ate our lunch on one of the picnic tables and mama made a jug of Kool-Aid with water that me and Joey pumped. Only mama liked it though. The water seemed like it had metal in it and made the Kool-Aid taste like great medicine. Me, Dad, Bai, and Joey dumped our Kool-Aid when Mama wasn't looking, but I had to ask for seconds and plug my nose and drink it because day one was my day to have peanut butter and jelly. And Mama always puts too much peanut butter on the sandwich and you gotta have something to wash it down in case you start choking. When we finished eating, Byron asked, what's the word on them toilets? Mama and Dad cracked up. So you like those, huh? Dad said. Mama said, you better get used to those, Byron. That's an outhouse, and that's what Grandma Sands has. What? If you try to be cool all the time and something surprises you, you sure do look stupid. Uh-huh, Dad said. That's where you're going to be taking care of your business for a while. Bye said, wait, let me dig this. If I got to go to the bathroom, I got to go outside into a little nasty thing like that? Ain't they got no sanitation laws down there? How you gonna have a hole for a toilet and not get folks sick? Don't them things attract flies? Mama and Dad laughed again. Mama said, your Grandma Sands always says it seems a lot nastier to her to be doing that in the house. The way she looks at it, a house is a whole lot nicer place if the facilities are outside. Oh, I remember those outhouses, Dad said. I remember when we used to visit my grandmother in the country and there would be a Sears catalog in the outhouse and when you were done, you just tore a page out of the catalog and we get the point, Daniel, Mama stopped Dad. After lunch, Bai went back into the log cabin outhouse and came back with his pockets bulging with toilet paper. He told me, man, they must be on dope if they think I'm gonna wipe my butt on some rough old catalog paper. We loaded the cooler back in the car and got back on I-75. When you're 10 years old like me, some of the time, no matter how excited you are or no matter how hard you try, you just can't help falling asleep in the car. I did a lot better than Joey though. She was out before I'd even sucked all the leftover peanut butter out of my teeth. She stretched out across the back seat and me and Bai argued about who would hold her head and who would hold her feet. Joey drooled a lot, so it was the worst job to hold her head. We had teased Mama so many times about planning everything so much in her notebook that Bai decided to be cute and asked, uh, could someone check that Watson's Go to Birmingham book 
and see who's supposed to be holding Joey's leaking head for the first hundred miles in Ohio? Mama and Dad looked at each other and laughed, and I did too. I really don't know why bullies have such a good sense of humor. It didn't matter who won the argument because the car started rocking me to sleep. Maybe someone could say the brown bomber was old and ugly, but you could never say anything bad about its seats. They were the best things in the world. I leaned my head back and watched Ohio go zipping by. I couldn't keep my head from sinking deeper and deeper into the brown bomber's seat. I woke up and got nervous real fast. I felt something wet in my pants and starting to run down my leg. I opened my eyes and said, phew, it was just Joey drooling all over me. I complained and Mama made Bye take Joey's head for a while. I took her shoes off for her and inside one of her shoes was a kind of worn down picture of a little white boy with a girl's hairdo and a smiling dog. In a circle around both of them, it said Buster Brown. As I drifted back to sleep, I wondered what a little white boy would think if he knew he was getting stepped on every day by my sister. Then my neck got rubberized again and my head nodded down. It nodded back up when I heard Mama say real soft to Dad, How you doing? Cincinnati's just ahead. Oh, I'm fine. I still got a lot in me. I think I'll just stop in Cincy for a stretch and some gas. Really? Mama didn't sound too happy. Sure, why not? The kids are all asleep and you look like you were about gone yourself. Mama didn't say anything, but I knew she'd have to change her plans if we didn't stop for the night in Cincinnati. Dad kept trying to make it seem okay. He smiled and said, don't worry, Wylona. We might as well just go a little further. I wanted to lean up and whisper to Mama that I knew what Dad was planning. But the last time I was asleep, Byron had put Joey's head back in my lap and I was just too lazy to move her. But I knew if I wasn't so sleepy, I could tell Mama what I'd heard Dad and Mr. Johnson saying before we left. Mr. Johnson knew a lot about cars, so Dad asked him to take a good look at the bomber before we went to Alabama. I was sitting in the car pretending I was driving and Dad and Mr. Johnson were under the hood. Oh yeah, Daniel, this baby's sound as a dollar. Well, let me ask you something, Theo, Dad had said. Do you think she could run it to Alabama straight? Hmm, Mr. Johnson thought for a minute. I don't see why not. As long as you keep your eye on the oil and the water, it shouldn't give you a lick of trouble. The question isn't the car. The question is, could you do it straight? Well, the most I've done before is eight hours, and Wylona says this will take about 15. But I've talked to some people in the shop, and they say it shouldn't be too tough. A couple of them are from Texas, and they say they've driven it straight. Alabama's closer, so why not? This Plymouth can do it if you can, Daniel. Good. Besides, think of the money we'll save. I'm going to give it a shot. But I'm not going to tell Wylona. She'd die. She's got this whole trip planned down to the last minute. Dad made his voice go kind of high and southern. And Daniel, between Lexington and Chattanooga, you will inhale 105,564 times and you'll blink 436,000 times. That is, of course, unless you see something exciting in which case you'll inhale 123,876 times and blink 437,000 times. Dad and Mr. Johnson cracked up. As we were going into Cincinnati, I wanted to lean up and whisper to Mama, hang on, Mama, you're going to blink and inhale about 62 zillion more times before you get out of this car. But the warm air and the highway noise and the brown bomber's seat and the way Joey was breathing all pushed me back to sleep. I was out through most of Kentucky, even though we stopped at some more Ohio-style rest stops. I was so tired that I even used a couple of outhouses, but I kept the door open and made Dad stand outside so in case I fell in, he'd be able to pull me out. The next time I woke up, we were pulled over at a Tennessee rest stop. There were no bathrooms and no outhouses or anything, just a pump and a picnic table. When Dad turned the headlights off, everything disappeared into the blackest night anyone had ever seen. As we looked out of the windows, Mama checked her notebook, then announced, this is the Appalachia Mountains. We're over 6,000 feet above sea level. This is higher than we've ever been before. And she didn't sound real happy about it either. All four doors of the brown bomber opened and the weird Watsons got out. As soon as everyone was awake enough to look around, we all bunched up and hugged up around Mama and Dad, even cool Byron. Dad laughed. What's wrong with you guys? 
Daddy, look how scary it is here, Joey said, pointing at all the giant shapes in the darkness. Nonsense, pumpkin. Those are just the mountains. What Dad was calling just the mountains were the scariest things I'd ever seen. On every side of us were great big black hills, and behind these were even bigger blacker hills, and behind these were the biggest blackest hills. It looked like someone had crumpled up a pitch black blanket and dropped the weird Watsons down into the middle of it. The air up this high didn't seem right either. It made you feel like something bad was going to happen. If this was a movie, there would be loud, scary organ music playing right now. Mommy, Joey asked, sounding real scared. Where did all these stars come from? We all looked up and instead of seeing the normal amount of stars, it looked like there had been a star explosion. There were more stars in the sky than empty space. That's because the air is so clean here. It looks like the sky in Birmingham. Up close to us in the rest stop, all we could see was the pump. It looked like a deformed, evil, one-armed space robot. As our eyes got used to the dark, we could also see the picnic table and behind it that black woods. Most of the time, Mama and Dad don't like arguing in public, but Mama was real hot. She said, well, do you see what your nonstop driving has done? Do you see? Instead of being in a motel, you've driven us straight into hell. That got everyone's attention because Mama almost never cusses. This really scared me. I know it's stupid, but before I could stop myself, I said, Hell, I thought you said this was Tennessee. Joey started boo-hooing right away. After we nervously nibbled on snacks, everyone sat on the same side of the picnic table. Me and Bai had to go to the bathroom in the woods. We found two trees where we could keep our eye on each other, and I said, Bai, do you think there are snakes out here? Snakes? I ain't scared of no damn snake. It's the people I'm worried about. I stopped looking at the ground and began watching the black woods. What people? I wished I'd picked a tree closer to Byron. Didn't you hear Mama say this was Appalachia? So? Man, they got crackers and rednecks up here that ain't never seen no Negroes before. If they caught you out here like this, they'd hang you now, then eat you later. What's a redneck? A hillbilly, only worse. Some of them don't even speak English. We made a break for the brown bomber. If Byron was trying to scare me, he was scaring himself too. I went too fast though and felt a couple of warm drips dripping down my leg. This time I couldn't blame it on Joey's drooling either. But I didn't care. Having a little pee in your pants had to be better than being dinner for some redneck. We loaded the car back up and no one really relaxed until Dad drove back out on I-75 and turned the headlights on. The lights knocked some of the darkness out of the way and we felt safe again. Everybody was better and laughing and talking a mile a minute. I can't believe how this air feels, said Dad. He was right. Everything smelled light and green. Whose turn is it on the Ultra Glide? Mine, I yelled. I handed Mama yakety yak and they all moaned. Dad stuck his hand out of the window just as the song came on and said, Feel that coolness. It feels like you're running your fingers through silk. Me, Mama Joey, and even Daddy Cool all did what Dad told us to do, and Dad was right. It felt great. Wiggle your fingers in it, Dad said. We all did, and the air seemed slippery and cool as it blew on your hand. We're up so high, and the air is so perfect that do you know what I think we're doing? Dad asked. What? I think we've got our fingers in God's beard, and as we drive along, we're tickling him. Byron acted like he was going to throw up. As we drove down the mountain with our arms sticking out of the windows and our fingers wiggling in the breeze, I thought the brown bomber must look like a bug lying on its back with four skinny brown legs kicking and twitching to try and put it back on its feet. Whatever we were doing, it was the best part of the trip so far. What could be better than driving on a mountain while Yakety Yak played and cool light air blew all over you.